on this day. We bid everybody a shalom. Complete shalom. But before we do or say anything, we want everybody first take a listen. What you about to hear is true. Everything I'm saying and finna do, I'm gonna give you scriptures on where you can find it. I'm gonna give you information that you can look up on your own. I'm gonna give you what I have to give you. Now it's up to you to take it and do something with it. Before we get started, I want to give a clear thanks to the panel that be on behind the blue curtain, Stan, Big John, Joe, Chief, and Izzy. Because on today, they showed how much we is not doing for the people who we call our people. They show how much we have moved from what's right and accepted a lifestyle that has nothing to do with us. Yeah. I guess you saw that window back there. Me too. Now, to all who is on this broadcast, I want you first to allow <laughs> the Father is trying to let it come in, girl, <laughs> that the anointing <laughs> is shine through the window. Anyway, I want everybody to just draw your minds in. We're going to do prayer. Then we're going to go out into some deep waters. Everybody who's on milk, this video ain't for you. This is only for the meat eaters. You got any carnivores out there? <laughs> Come on. Come on and pray us into a different atmosphere, girl. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this being another day that you have made. Father Yah, we have decided to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for another opportunity, Father, yes. to share the word that you have given us, Father. Father, we just ask for your anointing because we know the anointing is what destroys the yokes and removes every burden. Yes. Father, we ask that you will break up the foul ground of the listeners, Father. That the word will go forth and it will fall on good ground, Father Yah. Mm -hmm. Father Yah, help the people to take that that's pertaining to them father and they begin to let it come alive and begin to be not just a hearer of your word but a doer of it also father yes Yah. yes father yeah we plead the blood of your son emmanuel against every satanic attack every assignment every misunderstanding every attitude every <coughs> spirit of pride every spirit of disbelief yes. that tries to linger on the minds of your people father come Yah. on father y'all we just pray and ask and thank you because you are already here. You said what two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst. Break that Father, break it, help break it. us to break down and to decrease yes. so that you can increase, Father Yah. Father Yah, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and that this word will be received with joy. Yes. All these we are asking in your name, Father Yah, through your son Emmanuel. So be it, and it is so. And it is so. Y'all, we finna deal with a topic that coming out of the book of Daniel. I know in our studies and in our lesson, we way past Daniel. But during the series of events that happened on this week, the father began to deal with me 
about a subject. And I want everybody to think, put your mind on the bullseye. Say so like you got a picture of a bullseye. And in the center of that picture, you got a round circle or circumference that says bullseye. But in the center of that circle that is on that paper, you got a black round circle that really gives you the mark on. You have a circle around the little black circle. And everything in that little circle we consider as the bullseye. But when you hit the bullseye, that means that you hit that black mark in that circle that is in the circle of the bullseye. Dead on the head. One shot. And a lot of us don't realize we are hitting the bullseye, but we are not hitting the bullseye. And over time, the trajectory of your shot will be off if you not hitting the mark. Understand what I'm saying is each time mathematically you do this equation a repeater puts you right back at the same number. That's why it's called a repeater. But whenever you are doing something and each time you add something or take something away, it completely removes you off your mark. What is you saying, Eddie? First, I'm going to let her read the opening scripture, the introduction to what we are talking about. It's coming from Daniel, second chapter, starting at the 43rd verse. Y'all who have your books, it reads as following. And as you saw, I mixed with muddy clay. Uh huh. They are mixing themselves with the seed of men. Yeah. But they are not clinging to each other. Mm hmm. Even as iron does not mix with clay. Okay. When we were taught this subject, it stems from a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about the statue. Everybody talks about the statue, the head, the arm, the shoulders, legs, but nobody seems to talk about the clay and the iron mix or the toes and sense. We was taught today, we was talking about kingdoms because of Babylonian, Medes and Persian, Greece, Rome, we, we understood that. But what is the feet and toes? Is it a kingdom? Is it a person? People? As I told y'all in my post, in my years that I served as being a assistant to the pastor. See, a lot of y'all have that wrong. Y'all talking about assistant pastor, but that ain't what you really is. You is assistant to the pastor. Anyway, my years of being assistant to the pastor as a minister, I studied this thing and I came out with the conclusion that they were talking about the ten Germanic tribes. And you know, you know the ten Germanic tribes. If you don't, look it up in history. It was ten of them who came and conquered and the Anglo-Saxons became the United States, Britain. Now, you, you, you don't want to go into all this history mess. But anyway, they became the United States, Anglo-Saxons. But I found out that that terminology was wrong from the mere fact when everybody who eat meat to catch this, you're dealing with a Yah or a mighty one. 
or your father, either way you want to call them. You are dealing with a spiritual being. So being that it's spiritual, my question is this. Does everything else is meaning spiritual? The answer is Everything has a spiritual meaning. Oh, okay, there you go. I just, I just want to make sure that you with me, you with me, you with me, you with me. Hey, she's still with me. Y'all see that. See that? Bam, bam, bam. Everything has a spiritual connection. Right. Now, Babylonian was spoke about how Yah sent Nebuchadnezzar in to conquer and to bring in to captivity everything in the southern kingdom with y'all knows it as Judah Benjamin and some of the Levites who joined that clan some of the upper northern people came in too but I don't want to get in and all that but anyway they took Judah away through the punishment of Yah that the Babylonians why did they took them away? Why did they take who? Judah to the city of Babylon. Let's see, can we get it? Why? Don't know? No? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> from the disobedience. <laughs> Y'all better come on and join so with us. Huh? Huh? Because I'm going to tell you, we're we going to smile. We, this thing is not going to be hard on us. We ain't going to sit here and be all tore up and mad by it because it is what it is, whether you like it or not. So it got taken away from disobedience. Now you heard the reading of Daniel. Do she need to read it again? Let her read it again so y'all know where we at. Daniel 2, 43. And as you saw iron mixed with muddy clay, mm -hmm. they are mixing themselves with the seed of men. Uh -huh. But they are not clinging to each other, uh -huh. even as iron does not mix with clay. Now, understanding number two <laughs> comes from Genesis, where they was talking about the mixtures of the sons of Yah mixing with the seed of man, meaning the daughters of man. And you know it came with that creating giants and all that. And number two, that's wrong. They ain't got nothing to do with this. So them who teach in this mess, I need y'all to look at them and shine them. Because that's got nothing to do with them. Remember, you are serving a spiritual being, not a natural being. And everything that a spiritual being talks about is what pertaining to the spirit. Yes, the natural will fall in understanding, but it's always pertaining to a spiritual point. Or spiritual direction or spiritual accomplishment or spiritual fulfillment it always goes spiritual so all your natural people this is not for you only for the spiritual incline what you mean I'm gonna give you the definition of the clay and the eye because it is spiritual alrighty if you will dun 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 Read verse 34. And in the days of these sovereigns that ye are mm -hmm. of the heavens shall set up a rain yes. which shall never be destroyed. Yes. Nor the rain pass on to other people. Uh -huh. It crushes and puts to an end all these rains. Now. And it shall stand forever. Now, 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 now. In verse 34, it telling you that what gonna happen? Woo! Y'all gonna come through and he gonna wipe out all this mess. What you mean? There is a true gospel that's gonna be preached and teach that ain't gonna be contaminated by man. Ain't gonna be touched 
with man hands. Ain't going to be put in or put out. What you speaking on? All right, watch this. Would you go with me to Matthew, fifth chapter, starting at the 13th verse? And I've got a question for you. Let her first read it, and I got a question. And let's see when I look at her, but she give me the question. You ready? Matthew 5 and 13. Here we goes. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt become tasteless. If the salt become tasteless. How shall it be seasoned? How shall it be seasoned? For it is no longer of any use. It is no longer of any use. But to be thrown out. But to be thrown out. And to be trotted down by to, men. And to be trotted down by men. Meaning that. How can you change. The density. Or the chemical component to salt. Watch this. Ah. By adding something to it. Adding something to it. Or taking something away. Or taking something away. That's the only way you can change the density of salt. That's the only way you can make it good for nothing. Because salt is pure. It's natural. The chemicals that makes up salt has no additive, no preservatives, none of that. It is made from the natural process of the earth. Wow, you didn't know that? I didn't either until I studied it. That was studied to show thyself approved. A work we needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You better come on here. I pat myself on the back for that one. Y'all come on here and watch it. See that? They even got her to smile. So. What are you talking about with the clay and the iron? It has a lot to do with what verse 44 and Daniel was talking about in verse 5 and 13 in Matthew. Only way that is going to be done, you got to add something to it or take something away. So, what in this world? I want y'all to think before you answer. What in this world has been completely contaminated by a foreign substance that do not mix with the pure substance? And dun 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 dun. dun hold it on. Hold it on. Give him a chance to think. Uh oh. I haven't got her joining in. See that? Mm -hmm. What in this whole wide world has got so contaminated by people adding something in or taking something out? Are you ready? The word. The word. Dumb feet. Tell that girl. Dumb feet and toes is the representation of the word all the rest was kingdoms and them kingdoms brought their religious preference and teachings and they contaminated Judah so bad that when Judah came back even the prophet Zerubbabel say it again Zerubbabel Zerubbabel one more time Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. When they came back, all the people who was left and didn't went into captivity, guess who they became? Samarians. And they wasn't allowed to come, rebuild the wall, worship like they was, because when the children of Israel came back from Babylonia, they was contaminated. You can get mad at me all you want. But the truth is the truth. And when they brought that contamination back. And began to do the word. Guess what happened? It went in the word. And not only did the contamination start from Babylonia. Hmm. That thing spread all the way through. 
What you talking about, Eddie? Well, let's go to First John. Not First John. Let's go to John 14. Regular John. Big John. Not little John. Big John. 14. Got it? 14 and what? 30. John 14 and 30. Uh-huh. I shall no longer talk much with you. Yes. For the ruler of this world is coming, and he possesses none at all in me. None. But, but in order for the world to know that I love the Father, and that as the Father commanded me, so am I doing. Rise up, let us go from here. Okay. Now, did you just understood what John said? No? Okay. Let's bring you another verse in John. John 12, 31. John 12 and verse 31. Mm -hmm. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world. And shall be cast out. Have you understood that? Both scriptures is talking about this world and the ruler of this world. Have I got you lost? Well, yeah, let me really make you lost. Go to 1 John 15, I mean 1 John 5 and 19. And I want y'all to catch what all three of these scriptures have in common. 1 John 5 and 19. Yes, ma'am. We know that we are of Elohim, mm -hmm. and all the world lies in the wicked one. Wow. Now, what are you saying, Eddie? These three verses was a postscript or a warning to the people about what was going to come. What was going to come? Does everybody want to hear what came? Okay, listen to me. In 325 CE, the first council of Nicaea was formed. And these people voted on a lot of things. But I want y'all to really catch what they voted on. And what everyone right now plays and do without even knowing that it was the ruler of this world that put that in to make you believe. What you mean, Eddie? Well, in the Council of 325, this is when the term Holy Ghost was introduced <clears throat> because they were beginning to practice the Trinity. Three gods, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which they done it in a fashion that right now today, let me give you a real breakdown. First it was Judaism. Y'all see my hand? Judaism. Then the Romans came in and started mingling with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Da, 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 da. This is where the scripture say they crept in and spied us out unaware and then went back and start their own. Y'all hear me? Start their own. So, the Catholic Church up under the rule of Constantine adopted Christianity as being its first and foremost religion. And this religion was forcefully put on everybody who Rome had rule over. Now, listen to me, all y'all Christians out there. I ain't knocking your faithfulness. I'm not knocking your dedication. 
I'm not mocking how you worship and what you worship. All that is on you. All I'm doing is telling you and showing you that your concept of what you're doing is not the right one on the foundation. If the foundation is off, and everything that you build on that foundation is off. Anybody know anything about brick mason? Anybody know anything about laying bricks? If you do, then first, you get the foundation. Second, you set up your plumb lines. Did that sound familiar? You set up your plumb lines. Everything has to touch that line. If not, then your whole wall is off. Just like the bullseye. If you don't hit it in the center of that center, you might have hit the target, but you didn't hit the bullseye. See, you're going to hear where the plumb line is so important. If it start off wrong, then it ends up wrong. And I'm sorry, but the Catholic Church got all their teachings from the Pharisees, Sadducees, from, from all those who made up everything that our Savior was against. All the teachings that our Savior warned you about. Right now, because of the teachings that we were taught, and you notice I said we, that include me too, was taught, was off, because of man intervention. That what changed the composition of the salt. What you mean, Eddie? I'll show you what I mean. If you will, how about read? Let me see, can I get this thing right now? Is it 13 or 14? Let's go at 13 first. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Let's play with this for a few seconds. You ready? If you ain't ready, let's get ready. Matthew 13. Yeah. Starting at 24 verse. And it reads as following. How does it read? Another parable he put before them saying. That's what he said. The rain of the heavens has become like a man who sowed good seeds uh -huh. in his field. Uh -huh. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed. Come on. No, oh, go, go. I, and sowed Donald among the wheat and went away. Uh huh. And when the blaze sprouted uh -huh. and bore fruit, uh -huh. then the dawn also appeared. Uh -huh. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to what him, What they said to him? Master, master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Come on now. From where then does does it have the dawn? Uh -huh. And he said to them, A man and an enemy did this. And this servant said to him, do you wish then that we go and gather them up? Uh -huh. But he said, no. At least while you gather up the darnell, you also uproot the wheat with them. Mm -hmm. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I shall say to the reapers, first gather the darnell uh -huh. and bind them in bundles to burn uh -oh. them. Uh -oh. But gather the wheat into my garden. Now, everybody trying to figure out what is he talking about. In your teaching, they was tares. Let the wheat and the tares go together. La, la, la. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they let you know that the wheat and the tares look so much alike. Come on. In my room. Okay, let me quit. And the wheat and the tares look so much alike that they did not want them to harvest them until both of them come to maturity. What are you saying, Eddie? Has anybody understood what the steel plants 
produced after the burning or the smelting of the iron ore. They produce what? Slag. Slag. <laughs> Bam. Slag. That's when uh, they remove the oil, the yeah. oil from the iron. That's when they remove it. Mm -hmm. uh, Keep on. Come on. Come on. You, you, you playing with it. Come on. I'm saying that's when they refine it or burn right, it. Right. Right. So it's se separating the oil, mm -hmm. the oil right. from the iron. Right. And then that stuff that's left is called the slag. Yeah, the slag. That means the stuff that... It's dangerous. Very dangerous. Deadly. Very deadly. Could be. Could be, especially if it falls in the wrong hands. Right. And I'm here to tell you, a bunch of slag fell in the wrong hands of the Catholic people. Because here it's going to come. Now, this is going to make a lot of y'all mad, but I'm sorry. Truth is truth. Are you ready? Ready. You ain't get mad. No, I ain't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Y'all better have fun with this because if not, you're going to be so mad that you'll be ready to slap your grandmama. Mm. Mm. The slag is the doctrine that the Catholic Church have peddled down. The Protestants, are y'all ready for this now? First it was Judaism, then the Catholic Church up under Judaism. Now you see my fingers wiggling? This is where all these other religions begin to spawn from. Hmm? The Protestants got mad at the Catholic and said, we're going to break away from y'all. We're going to start our own thing. Hmm? But the Protestants broke away from the Catholics. But it didn't break away from the Catholic values and views and the way that they handle and do people. So they started what the Protestants call Christianity. Okay. Da, da, da. <laughs> da, 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 da. So the Protestants is the Christians. Y'all ain't gonna like this. But not only did it the Catholic or Judaism spurn Catholic or Catholicism or Catholicism, it also spurned what everybody is saying that is the enemy of Isaac. What is the enemy of Isaac? Ishmael, who is the father of the what? Muslim. Go ahead, girl. Woo! Look at that. Huh? So, now you got two out there. You got Christianity and Muslimism. But it didn't stop there. Because why? Judaism never died. It was the one that spawned Catholics, Muslim, Christians. All came from Judaism. And the bad thing about it, you didn't came from the right part. You came from the part that our Savior, I want everybody to listen to me, that our Savior was totally against. See, we don't understand how important this is. To get on the right foundation. Now, I, seriously, y'all, I'm not here knocking nobody belief, nobody understandings, nobody teachings. I'm giving you pure facts that you can look up, huh? Minds to clarify, minds to matter of fact. Whenever that adversary do not want us to have or look at something, yeah, mine's acting up. I'm on an old century laptop that blurry as a chicken. But I tell you, listen to what is being put here, please. Your foundation is crucial. Check your foundation. And if you find in your wall building errors, then that means you didn't start with a plumb line. 
it's very important that you put the plumb line to all that you is being taught. Because I'm sorry. Listen. Come on, bang. Mm -hmm. Come on and give me Ezekiel. Is she all right? I don't know. Well, check and see if she all right. Yeah. I can entertain them until you check and see. Y'all, you got to please excuse us because we're having technical difficulties because the daughter of our house is steady calling and we don't know if it's an emergency or not. This is what we call live broadcast because it's live, baby. Everything is right off the muscle. You're getting this stuff hot off the press. So I advise you, so while she is gone, turn <coughs> with us to Ezekiel 14, starting at the 14th verse. Just give you times to get it, because Ezekiel 14 and 14 speaks about what is real and what is not. Come on in. She all right? Yeah. Okay, she all right, y'all. Yay! She is all right. Here we go, Ezekiel 14 and 14. Even though these three men, uh -huh. Noah, Daniel, and Job. Now listen now, they're talking about Noah, Daniel, and Job. Now, to all y'all, I'm sorry. They didn't mention nothing about no Abraham. They ain't mentioned nothing about no Moses. So Isaac, Joseph, or Jacob, or none of them Acups. Don't get mad at me. All y'all Hebrew people. They ain't mentioned Moses. Well, it wasn't for Moses. Y'all don't understand how bad Noah really was. Y'all really truly. Y'all go to all these other ones. Abraham, Paul, and all the you just don't know who Noah really was. All you were taught, he was somebody who rolled on the ship with a bunch of animals. That's all you was taught. But if you ever could come out of them books and get in the book that they warn you not to read, you will see why they tell you not to read them books. Because them books expose the lie what they have put out there. That's why they didn't want you to read them books. That's why they ban you from them books. But nevertheless, we are going in to this. Listen. Even though these three men, uh -huh. Noah, Daniel, and Joe, Noah, Daniel, and Joe, were in it, uh -huh. they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, declares the master Yahuwah. Listen. If I cause an evil beast to pass through the land, yes, and it shall bereave it, yes, and it shall be a wasteland, yes, so that no man passes through no because man. of the beast. Because of the beast. Stop. <laughs> what is the beast of this land? Somebody want to tell me? Come on, let me out religion. there. The religion. You don't realize that the capitalist teaching is the beast what they were talking about in Revelation. No, well, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. And the funny thing about it, and I want nobody to get mad at me because I don't want to run you away. I want you to be able that whenever your eyes come open, you can hear the words that I'm saying. Your religion is spawned from the Catholics. Don't get mad at me. There was only two, Catholics and Protestants. You say you're not a Catholic. You don't believe in nothing that the Catholic Church wears or does, right? You was a Protestant. There's only two. Everybody who I know, I'm Hebrew. Well, guess what, you Hebrews? Guess what? Let me give y'all a piece of advice, too. Y'all is following the Leviticus laws. Mm. My wife just said, mm -mm -mm. You're doing what the Pharisees and the Sadducees taught. 
Am I right or wrong? Come on. If you're doing what the Pharisees and the Sadducees taught, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees was the one who taught Rome, and Rome was the one who adopted the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church was the one that put the institution, and the Protestants broke off from them, and from the Protestants came the Christian and, and Islam and all. My question is this. Have you checked your foundation? Because your foundation came from, and I say it again, the very ones who our Savior was against. If I'm wrong, go back and you check it for yourself. But listen, he said, if the beasts come through the land, tear the land up, no man will be saved. Even those, even though these three men were in it, was in it as I live, declares the master Yahuwah, mm -hmm. they will deliver neither sons nor daughters. Uh huh. They alone would be delivered, but the land be a wasteland. Now my question is this: Why is it that only if those three men was in the land, why will only they be saved and none of us won't be saved? Anybody got a question, an answer for that? Because of their righteousness? Because of their righteousness. Okay. Now, my question is this. Here it comes. They say because of their righteousness. What is the difference between their righteous and our righteous? Anybody know? No? Uh, I don't know, but I'm going to guess. Yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can guess. I don't know. Would, would, would it be because of Emmanuel? Because of Emmanuel. Okay. That could be just as wrong, but. No. It's because of this Ruah living on the inside of them. Because the Ruah living on the inside of us. Uh -huh. But not them. But not them. Back then. See? I don't know. No, watch this. <laughs> These fellas. And I want everybody to listen at me. And as I tell you, I'm not knocking nobody. But I'm giving you truth. These three fellows was governed by the Ruah. Mm -hmm. Everybody else now, they, uh-oh, uh, uh, y'all please don't take this wrong because I'm not knocking you. But it's true. Everything else now resides of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was not the Ruach. The Holy Spirit was something that they made to teach the Trinity, the three gods. There was never, ever, no place in the word that there was ever mentioned a three God system. So now I, I, I know a lot of y'all saying I'm blaspheming. A lot of y'all saying I'm this, I'm that. A lot of y'all may accept it. A lot of y'all may not accept it. But go back. Do your historical study. And you will see. That in 325, this is when the term Holy Ghost, because in 1582, they changed it from Holy Ghost to Holy Spirit. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to knock nobody or beat nobody or change nobody. All I'm doing is just giving you true facts that you may put the plumb line on your foundation and realize if it don't touch the line, all the way across, there's something wrong. Come on, read, because I know I done lost a lot of people. Or if I bring a sword <laughs> on that land, mm -hmm. and I shall say, sword, sword, go through the land, go through the land, and it shall cut off man and beast. From uh -huh. Even though these three men were in the midst as I live, yeah. declares the master Yahuwah. See? 
They would deliver neither sons nor daughters, right. for they alone would be delivered. Right. Verse 19. Uh-huh. Or if I send a pestilence into that land, yes. and I shall pour out my wrath on it in blood uh-huh. to cut off from it man and beast. Yes. Even though Noah, Noah Daniel, Daniel, and Job, and Job were in it as I live, right. declares the master Yahuwah. I want you to stop right there. Why is he only referring to Noah, Daniel, and Job? I tell you why. There was no one who had the faith and trust like Job. Number one. No one was ever like him. There was only one Job. Why is he talking about Noah? Noah whether well, everybody understand it, was the first human being after the destruction of the world. And being the first human being, he had to follow what y'all said. Or none of the animals in your little ark stories, him and his wife or none of his sons would have never made it. And the earth would have never been repopulated because everything was wiped out. Hmm? Now this is a tricky one. Who was the one left? Daniel. Daniel. What was so about Daniel? Daniel was his eyes. Let me. Wait, wait, I punch his ears. Eyes and ears. During a period of captivity when nobody else kept all glory, the true sayings of Yah. Because it only was Daniel. I want y'all to hear me. I don't want to make a joke out of it, but I will. Chat rap, me, sir, and this. Okay, I won't. <laughs> and a big deal. This ain't a neat, bro. But, <laughs> them four, by the guidance of Daniel, was the only ones who ever kept the truth that y'all have spoke to them. The rest of them ate the king's food, drunk the king's wine, adopted the Babylonian mood. The rest of them. So now I'm here to tell you, everything that came out of Babylon was tainted. So how could this is what the scripture is saying? Only those who still had the truth, the one that went through the fire and all the slags fell off of him, was the only three. The rest? Nope. So what you're saying, Eddie, there is a true Worship. And I can't give it to you. All me and my wife is a seed planters. I can't make it grow in you. She can't make it grow in you. I may plant it. Somebody else may come along when you read through your timelines or whatnot. May give a little water to it. But if y'all don't increase it, if y'all don't bring it to life, it's just a seed waiting in the earth to be born. Why? Read. Watch this. It says, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, the class of Master Yah, yes. they would deliver neither son nor daughter. Nothing. They would deliver their they would deliver their own lives by their righteousness. Only them. For thus said the Master Yahuwah, mm -hmm. how much more it shall be when I send my four evil judgments on Jerusalem, uh -oh. the sword and sanctity of food and evil beasts and pestilence to cut off man and beast from it. But see, there shall be left in it a remnant who are brought out, uh -oh. both sons and daughters. <laughs> Oh, that should be a remnant. Mm -hmm. Meaning, somebody got the truth. 
Right? Just a small portion got the truth. Not a worldwide scale thing. Just a small portion. I got a question for y'all. You better watch that worldwide spread. What? You better say what? You better watch that worldwide spread thing. This word been forced on anybody who the new world came up to. If they went to Portugal, this word was enforced. If they went to Africa, this word was enforced. If they went to New Guinea, this word was enforced. Quebec, it doesn't matter. All over the world. I'm going to take you back to a time when they came and stole our ancestors, as they say, but they wasn't stole. They were sold by, 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 by people of that land. When they brought us over here, one lady gained her freedom by saying she was baptized in Britain and was a Christian. And they will not enslave her. The meaning Christian, if you understand how much blood, innocent, let me get it right, Innocent blood was spilt for that name. You check your foundation. If you understand how many lives was taken for that name, you put a plumb line on your foundation. But come on, let's go. But but see, verse 22. Huh? But see, there shall be left in it a remnant who are brought out, both sons and daughters. No. See, they are coming out to you, and you shall see their ways and their deeds, and shall be comfort concerning the evil which I have brought upon Jerusalem, mm. all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when you see their ways and their deeds. And you shall know that it was not for naught that I have done whatever I did yes. in it, declares the Master Yahuwah. Now I'm going to give it to you. I'm here on the blog and the topic and the podcast watching behind the blue curtain. Shout out to all my brothers. And if you notice the atrocities that is still being dealt on us, you'll begin to realize why I'm teaching what I'm teaching. If you see how this world is against you for no reason at all. You done nothing to them. You hurt none of them. You spoke none of them. But yet and still, you getting abused and used. You need to open your eyes and see what I'm saying. It's for those who sick and tired of being sick and tired. For those who your assemblies have hurt, destroyed, kicked out for no reason when you was innocent, just behind my line. To those who find the ones you trust is the one that deceives and hurts you, who is speaking all this holy, holy, holy stuff. This message is for y'all. Because the Father loves you. The Father is still there for you. And it wasn't his will that that person did you the way they did you. 
You've been picked up to be picked on. Why? I can't tell you why. But there's a remnant, a small remnant. When you ain't got nowhere to go, try a set of partners. Leave all that Christianity bull where it at. Come live a life a set apart. You'll see a difference. You want to see a difference? Come with me. Last thing. Zechariah. Fourth chapter. Second through the 14th verse. And I'm finna quit. Because this is your chance to understand that there's going to be a true, pure gospel that's going to come. That ain't going to be tainted with man hand. All this translation, all this interpretations, all this transliteration. No. And this gospel... When it come, and when I mean when it come, a lot of y'all don't realize. When your eyes is open, this gospel just came to you. Oh, glory. Come on. Yeah, I'm kind of serious now. I done played through the whole video, but I'm serious now. When this true gospel come, and your eyes begin to come open, and you begin to see all these assemblies, all these movements for what they really are, then you're going to ask yourself the same question that all of us who set apart ask. There is something missing. There is something missing. There's more to it than whooping and hollering, running and knocking over benches. There is more to it. Than sitting there memorizing the Bible. You memorize. Verse. Chapter. Word for word. To impress. Somebody else. I'm here to tell you. Once this thing is in your heart. The rule I will bring all things back to your remembrance. What was spoken by the Father. You don't believe me? Watch this. You got it, Zechariah? Yes. Fourth chapter. Second verse. And he said to me. What he said? What do you see? What you see? So I said, I have looked and see a lamp stand. Uh -huh. All of gold with a bowl on top of it. Yeah. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven spouts to the seven lamps. <laughs> And the two olive trees are by it. I want y'all to really slow down and grab this thing. What you see? Tell me what you see. I, I have looked and seen mm -hmm. a lampstand. A lampstand. One lampstand. All of gold with a bowl on top of it. All of gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps. And with seven spots to the seven lamps. What is they talking about? Is you ready for some knowledge? Because see this meat here. This is not. No baby food. There's only one. Yah. One father. One. And beneath that one. There are many. Messengers. And beneath the messengers. There are many, whoo, come on in, created ones. When you are talking about the bowl, the Father is the bowl. When you are talking about the lampstand, the candlestick, who is your high priest right now? Who? Say it again, girl. Emmanuel. Through Emmanuel, every other thing that was for you was able to come out from the seven. Seven is meaning completion. 
And through the completion of what Emmanuel did, comes out the seven spouts. What? Out these spouts is your angels. That is dispatch under you. And not only your angels been dispatched, watch what they finna say. Read. And the two olive trees are by it, mm -hmm. one at the right of the bowl uh -huh. and the other at its left. Then I responded and spoke to the messenger who was speaking to me, saying, What? What? What is this? Left, right, trees? What? Come on. I'm talking to an angel now. What are these, my master? What is these? And the master who was speaking to me answered and said to me, What he said? Do you not know what these are? You don't know what these are? And I said, No, my master. Heck to the no. Come on here. And he answered and said to me, this is the word of Yahuwah to Zerubbabel, uh -oh. not by might. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get ready for this. Come on. This is the word of Yahuwah to Zerubbabel, uh -huh. not by might, uh -huh. nor by power, uh -huh. but by my spirit, uh -huh. saying, Yah of hosts. So that means all this that y'all been studying and doing and memorizing and whatnot, no matter what you do, and this is for everybody who's listening, everybody who's not listening, this is even for Biden himself, Joe Biden. Nothing you do can get you in if it wasn't for grace. Who are you? Who are you? Great Mountain? Who are you? Before the river bell. Huh? A plane? And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of favor, favor to you. Whoa! And the words of Yahuwah came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, huh? and his hands shall complete it. And you shall know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me to you. Uh oh. For who has despised the day of small beginnings? Woo! Come on here. They shall rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Y'all reject set apartness because it don't have no big audience. It don't have no big old cathedrals. It don't have no big old congregation. It don't have no big old band. It don't have no big old choir. It don't have no big old building. You reject it because 95% of us is not famous. We is not no big Congregation, no mega churches, no, no, you, no, you ain't gonna sing on them big choirs, none of that with us. We are that remnant that he speaks of. We are the ones that the plumb line been put on. For who has despised the day of small beginnings? Yes. They shall rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Why? These seven are the eyes of Yahuwah, which diligently search throughout all the earth. Then I responded and said to him, What? What are these two olive trees? What are these olive trees? One at the right of the lampstand, mm -hmm. and the other is at its left. And I responded a second time and said to him, what are these two olive branches which empty golden oil from themselves by means of <laughs> two golden pipes? Woo! Come on now. And he answered me and said, Do you not know what these are? Do you? And I said, No, my master. No. And he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand beside the master of all the earth. What two anointed ones? The two who are going to come back and preach the everlasting gospel to the world. 
out of the seven pipes is the seven eyes of Yah that go out throughout the world. Everybody has a guardian angel that reports everything that you do. Every ounce is written down. Whether it be good, whether it be bad. And you want to know the funny thing about it? And I'm going to say this. You better put that plumb line on your life. I don't care. You, you, you can sit here and fool yourself and tell yourself, it don't matter as long as I repent, as long as I do this, as long as I say this. It don't matter how much good you do. It don't matter how many old people you help cross the street, how many broke, distorted people you give money to, how many times you say chicken in a basket. It don't matter. What? do matters that the Ruah reports to Yah and tell him that one followed everything that you said through me that's who grace should cover Y'all don't like me. And you don't want me to say anything. But Revelation chapter 11, the third and fourth verse, is where we're going to end at. You got me? Yes. Read. And I shall give unto my two witnesses, mm -hmm. and they shall prophesy 1,000. 260 days clad in sackcloth. Uh -huh. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that are standing before the Elohim of the earth. Well, somebody slap my grandma. The two trees that was in Zechariah now here in John's vision. If you is not operating in the right doctrine, and when I say the right doctrine, everybody gonna say, "Oh, nobody don't have the real two doctrine." You're wrong about that. Do you want to know why I say you're wrong about that? Come on, honey, hold up your hand with me. We do. <laughs> Put my hand up so I know what I'm doing. We do. That's why it's so important to study. Yes. And as you study, the Father Himself will give you an understanding. And He will help you mm -hmm. to cipher through the stuff that's been tainted. Yes. Come on. Come on. Let him do So it. while the stuff is being tainted, that's the reason why He made the statement that He just made. Because the Father don't want to lead. He won't lead us astray. Nope. But we got to get in there and read. Not read, but study. Get an understanding. And that's where the spirit of wisdom and knowledge come in. Mm -hmm. That the Father wants us to have. That's the counsel. And the same way he led the children of Israel. by With, with the cloud through the day and the pillar of fire at night. He has his rule on the inside of us. And it will help lead and guide us. In the way that we need to go. Because it's a spiritual thing first. Yes. We're dealing with a spiritual. Mm. Mighty great one. Mm. And so he's going to talk to us. But we just have to have the ear. To hear. And then. Also. Be with the intent. To do. What it is that we hear. Because he will not lead us astray. 
See, that's he just won't do that, y'all. He just will not. As long as we are obedient, there's a scripture that said, as long as you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. As long as we are obedient to the Father, he will not withhold nothing. Nothing. From his people. Nothing. So the thing of it is, what are we doing? What are we we doing? know that the shortcoming is not in the Father. It is us. We're missing. Maybe the prayers need to change. Give me a hunger and a thirst after your word, after your right, so I can be right yes. with you to where I can hear you. Yes. Make me over again, creating me a clean heart and renew your right rule on the inside of me. Yes. Our prayers need to change. Yes. Because nobody else do not know <clears throat> us. But I guarantee you, our Father that created us know us inside and out. Yes. He wants to purge us. Yes. He wants to cleanse us. Yes. The question is, do we want to be cleansed? And because do. through a cleaning process, mm -hmm. it does not make you popular. It no, does not don't. make you well liked. No. It makes you be looked on and frowned up. Oh, she crazy. They don't mm -hmm. know what they're talking yeah. about. No. It doesn't. They don't put you in the spotlight. But why would you search for praises from a man that don't have a heaven or a hell to, to place you? you? That's right. Or a soul that they can destroy and send to. Why? We've been messed up. We've been hoodwinked. Hood hood We've been bamboozled. Come We've on. been tricked with that spirit of whoredom that's riding on that beast, y'all. And see, a lot of people think about that scripture that says, wide is the gate and straight is the mm -hmm. road, yeah. narrow mm -hmm. is the road. Mm -hmm. okay, what is it actually talking about? I thought it was talking about the sinners. But no, no, I beg to differ. It's not. Go and study. Religion is the biggest thing there is you got. That's and if you do I not move. watch it, you're on that wide road to that destruction. It. Let's get on the narrow road to where we can make it and spend eternity with our Father, enjoying it and living the life that He always wanted us to have. Wow. All in a nutshell before I go because our time has ran out. Change. Put your teachings. Put it to the plumb line. Not only just studying. I'm giving y'all heads up. Not only just read what's in King James. Go to the book of Jasper. Go to the book of Jubilee. Go to the book of Enoch. Go to the Maccabees. Go to Tobit. Y'all begin to read these books. Because it's going to show you and unravel all that web of lies. They have shot you, taught you, ingrained in you. I bid you shalom. Just don't go through the fire. I bid you shalom. Shalom. But, but, but I promise you this. Your flesh ain't gonna like it. Before I go, yeah. Your flesh ain't gonna like it. All that you was taught, it ain't gonna like it. And it's gonna tell you, oh, don't read that. You don't need it. That's when you need to ask yourself, well, why is it telling me that? Why? If it ain't good, if it ain't for me, I ain't going to accept it anyway. Shalom to all. Oh, every day.